Everyone, good to see you all again. So for those of you using your Google Cardboard, um, who all has them with them? Can you put them up? Okay, I see some of you. Sherman got his, Sanford has them. Who's tried them out so far? Anyone tried them out? Sherman, what do you think about it? Have you tried it? Um, yeah, I actually like the cardboard. I think it's really cool. I was actually seeing if this could work on games. So I was actually downloading a few games that they recommend. It was really fun. I feel like this dungeon crawler game, whatever, it was scary. But it's a really fun piece of hardware. I love it. So today we're going to be touring Duke. How many of you have been on Duke's campus before? Anyone? New for everyone? Pasha? Sherman? All right, so Sherman, this will be a reminder for you. Uh, for the rest of you, hopefully it's exciting to see something new today. So we do two things with this type of tour, okay? So we're going to do the tour, and then I have three Duke students coming on to answer any of your questions. So as you're doing this, start thinking of some questions that you want to ask um, them. And so they come from a variety of different backgrounds at Duke. Um, so you'll have a really good kind of representation to see all the different great stuff that the school offers. If you're using the YouTube one, you're just going to, in the bottom right corner, it has this little Google Cardboard logo. It looks like two little eyes. You're just going to click that, put it into your cardboard, and center the arrow in the middle. So you'll just center it right there. You'll see two lenses on, the, on YouTube when it changes to VR, and you're just going to center it right there. Close it up, and there you got your full VR right there. So if you have any questions, just put it in the chat, let me know. With that said, you all can get started on your tours. So you got about, yeah, 15 minutes to get through those tours and then we'll have the panelists be on in, uh, in a few minutes, okay? Everyone sound good? Give me some thumbs up. All right. So as y'all are wrapping up, would love to have you put in the chat some things that stood out to you. You can also start putting some questions in the chat that I can ask our panelists. Let's see. Kira says they had an inn and golf club. Yeah, so actually the uh, Washington Duke Inn, right now because of COVID, they've actually been placing students there to live there, which is insane. So students actually live on like the full golf course and stuff right now, which is crazy. It's mostly athletes though, as you can expect, um, but it is cool that the students get to live there. The Duke Garden is very beautiful. Jalen, or no, who's the with that, Jonathan? I highly recommend checking out on a person someday. The architecture is beautiful, yeah. Um, so the architecture is a really nice mix of like Gothic with really modern buildings. So you'll see a lot of glass with like the Gothic art, um, what's it called? Arches and stuff all over the campus. So they've renovated a lot of the campus, but they've tried to maintain that old feel to it too. It's a really cool campus in that way. So I want to introduce you all to Lisa Regula and Cooper Edmonds coming in from Duke. I will let them introduce themselves real quick. If we could just get your, um, just say your name, uh, what year you graduated or are currently in right now, your major and where you're from and a fun fact about you. I know that was a long list, so let me know if I need to remind you. Uh, let's start with Lisa. All right, thanks, Quincy. Hi, everyone, my name's Lisa. I actually just graduated um, with class of 2020, so graduating in the middle of a pandemic has been fun and exciting, to say the least. Um, I was a double major uh, at Duke in biology and evolutionary anthropology. I'm originally from San Diego, California, but I'm now living in the Boston area. And a fun fact about me is that, um, I, I have a really in-depth knowledge of lemurs because of the Duke Lemur Center. I used to work there and uh, did a lot of research there. So if anyone has questions on lemurs, please feel free to ask me. I will talk about it forever. That's a great fun fact, Lisa. And also, Lisa, you got a compliment in the chat. We got Jalen saying your hair is really pretty. So. Oh my God, thank you so much. I, my quarantine task has been trying to get my like little curls to hold and they're getting there. So <laughs> any tips on that too would be if anyone's got good ones. Well, it looks great. Thank you, Lisa. Um, let's go to Cooper. Yeah. Hey, um, so I'm a junior this year and I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina, but now I live outside of Jacksonville. My parents moved when I was uh, in college. So that's where I am now. And I'm double majoring in computer science and philosophy. Came in wanting to do computer science philosophy is kind of random, but I really like it. Um, fun fact. Well, 
I'll stick on the animals thing. And this isn't really a fact about me, but it's a fun fact nonetheless. If you've never heard of quokas, they're a cute animal that's indigenous to Rottnest Island, which is in Western Australia. You got to check those guys out because they're really cute. And they've been, to, to my, to much to my girlfriend's chagrin, they've been my phone background for the last two years. So uh, I guess, yeah, your phone backgrounds are whatever you love the most. So it's quokas for me. I'm sure she loves that. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here with us, Cooper. Um, and we just got our last panelist in here, um, Liz. Liz, you there? Can we get your name, uh, grade, or like your year, uh, your major, where you're from, and a fun fact? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Elizabeth. Um, I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm studying mechanical engineering, um, and I'm minoring in psychology and religion. Um, and a fun fact is that um, I have an identical twin sister. Those are great. Thank you so much. So we have some questions that the students have asked um, for clarification for our panelists. The students just wrapped up their first virtual tour. So they just got to see all the cool parts about Duke. Um, so I can get started with some of these questions. Firstly, is the food actually that good? Let's go to Lisa. Yes, it, it is. There's so many good places and the best I, I personally think is the loop. Um, they have really great burgers and really, really great fries. Uh, but there's also like a lot of really good healthy options. Um, so you do, if you are ever on campus, you got to check them all out. They're really, really great. Thank you, Lisa. And Liz, could you speak to kind of like the freshman year dining versus upperclassmen? Yeah, sure. Um, so freshman year, you live on East Campus generally. So you have a meal plan um, where you eat breakfast and dinner in Marketplace, which is like an all you can eat, um, like buffet, like kind of classic college dining hall situation. Um, and then you also have food points to eat like lunch or other snacks, other meals on West Campus. Um, but then when you get to be a sophomore and upperclassman, you just have food points. So you just eat like a la carte um, meals on West Campus. Thank you for that. And while we're on the topic of uh, meals, we got a question about flunching. Have any of you, Cooper, you can chime in here too, done flunching? Could you speak to that? So I haven't, oh, Lisa, was, so I haven't actually officially flunched a professor, but I've, I've gone to lunch with professors. So I guess I should have just flunched them because the school pays for it. So that was kind of dumb on my part. <laughs> but, yeah, um, but no, the thing is, yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you what flunching is. So flunching is basically you uh, like send in a really quick note to whomever um, and you get $50, I think it is, for your meal and for a professor's meal to eat on campus. Um, and you just talk to them about whatever you're interested in talking to them about. And it's great because if it's not a small class and you're interested in your professor still, then you might flunch them and you can talk about their career, what brought them to Duke, what their research is, or just something totally random. Your career maybe, like what you're thinking about studying or what you are studying, anything. And every professor is really receptive to that. So it's a nice way to get some one-on-one -on -one time with professors. Thanks for that, Cooper. And one thing I'll add on that is we now have grunching too. So if you're interested in getting in touch with a TA or grad student as an undergrad, they also have a similar program set up so you can get more intimate time with them as well. Um, so moving on to the next question, why did you choose Duke? Um, and could you speak to kind of like your whole process of applying to school, how you landed at Duke and um, if it was the right choice for you? Let's go to Lisa. Yeah, so I, coming from like the other side of the country from California, I ended up picking Duke for a couple reasons. One of them was because when I actually got to talk to people on campus, it seemed like a really cooperative environment. So a lot of other places, people, especially wanting to be um, study science, I was really worried about people being competitive in classes, you know, wanting to just do anything to get ahead. And I just did not see that from the student body at Duke. People were, and I saw that during my time there as well. People are really willing to help. Like they'll sit up in the common room with you until midnight helping you figure out an organic chemistry assignment. Um, and then another uh, really great thing was just, I felt that people actually were really passionate about the school and everyone who was there had something that they were really good at and really interested in. And if you just spent some time talking to everybody that you met, uh, you could learn a lot about a lot, wide variety of topics. So I thought it was just kind of a good place to expand and kind of get out of the little bubble of California that I had lived in my whole life. Thank you for that, Lisa. Let's go to Elizabeth. 
Yeah, so um, I always wanted to do engineering undergrad, um, and I didn't want to go to a tech school, though. Like, I wanted to be surrounded by people who were doing different things and not have all my friends be engineers. Um, and so Duke has, was really good for that, because, like, the engineering school is pretty small um, and kind of its own little community, but, like, most of my friends aren't engineers, so I have a lot of contact and classes with people um, from different majors and then kind of the same thing that Lisa was saying like people from Duke just like really speak very highly of Duke and really like genuinely enjoy like every aspect of it I think um and that seemed different to me than like some of the other schools that I looked at that people had a lot um just kind of like less school spirit less enthusiasm when they were talking about their experience thanks for that let's go to Cooper yeah, so it's funny because I kind of, uh, like, I agree with what Liz said, but it wasn't what I was thinking when I was in high school. I, I ended up at Duke because I got a scholarship and I was planning on going to a school that was more technical and everybody was going to be more technical and everything like that. And that's what I thought I wanted because I wanted to do computer science and be a software engineer and all that. But I'm so glad that basically I was wrong and it didn't end up mattering because I went to Duke anyway. And I'm around people who are not all doing computer science or doing engineering or anything like that. It's really great to be around students who are number one, really passionate. You'll get that at, at a lot of good schools. And then number two, what's really important is being passionate about things that I, I am not passionate about or things I wasn't passionate about, which is different because philosophy, for instance, like they never think about that. And then all of a sudden that's a double major of mine, maybe even the one that I prefer at this point, which is really funny and probably wouldn't have happened if I went to a school where it was kind of more myopic and computer science or engineering focused. So I, that's the reason that I should have uh, wanted to go to Duke before. And that's not what I thought. And now it's what I do think. So I'm lucky. Um, and yeah, basically. You I also think speak to the um, computer science department. Can I speak Duke? to the computer science department? Yeah, sure. So Duke's computer science department is, is pretty great, depending, really irrelevant kind of of what specific thing you want to do. Computer science is a pretty like broad topic. And a lot of people who are studying computer science actually want to be software engineers which at some schools might be an issue because you're either going to have basically like a quasi software engineering major and it's going to therefore lack rigor uh, in like the theoretical stuff, or you're going to have just theory. And then the people who are like, okay, this is great theory, but I want to go work at Google or Facebook, for instance, are going to be like, you know, this isn't, this is not prepping me for my job because theory is not really going to prepare you for your job uh, necessarily like a one-to-one -one ratio, but we have both of those things. So there are great classes um, there's a shipping, uh, delivering software from concept to client, for instance, which I took uh, fall of sophomore year, which is you work with a real client that Duke facilitates, sets up, and your entire semester is working on a real project all the way through. So we have that side of it. And then we also have uh, professors who are at the forefront of natural language processing and uh, other machine learning things, image processing, all of that. So we really have a good breadth and depth. Thanks for that. And one thing y'all touched on um, in that, Cooper, you were talking about kind of your scholarship. Um, could some of you speak to different financial aid opportunities and scholarships at Duke? Yeah, so I, a, a huge reason for coming to Duke was financial aid for me. Um, Duke meets 100% um, of financial aid. So whatever FAFSA says your family can pay, uh, Duke will cover the rest of that. Um, whether it be in scholarships or grants. And for me, that was a really big thing because I was able to come to Duke. Uh, it was actually cheaper for me to come out to Duke than it was to stay and like go to a UC school. So that was really, really great. Uh, and you'll get an individual like financial aid officer. So if you are on financial aid, there is somebody that you can go to and email directly. And that's kind of a nice thing about a slightly smaller school as well is when I had situations that would change my family's financial situation, it was pretty easy to know exactly who to go talk to and say, I can't afford to pay this. So I'm going to need something done, something changed and kind of find a way to work around it. Thanks for that, Lisa. And Cooper, could you speak to the scholarship? Yeah, sure. So the scholarship process is one where all you have to do is apply to, to Duke, uh, like early or regular, um, students, so some people in my scholarship applied early. Some people think that might kind of dissuade them from picking you, but that's not really the case. So you can apply early or regular. And um, basically they, I think your admissions officer looks at all of the applications, kind of some of them get filed over into consideration for the merit-based scholarships. And then from there, some of those get chosen to come on campus for three days for an interview. There are a wide variety of scholarships. I think there are maybe eight 
I can't speak to all of them. Um, there, the one that I am is, um, just kind of broad. It's like any student. Um, and then there's some that are North Carolina specific. Uh, there's one that's the Carolinas, North Carolina and South Carolina specific. Um, so th yeah, th they're good. They, um, they put you in contact with some faculty, like for like monthly chats, uh, in smaller groups, there's nice perks like that. Um, definitely nothing is better than the money. And honestly, no nothing th that it gives you, you can't just recreate if you're willing to be like a little bit, go out of, out of your way a little bit more. So it's not like a, a make or break on the aspect of your quality of experience at all. Um, but it's nice. Uh, yeah. Let me know if there's anything more specific you want to know about that. Thanks for that. Um, so we had another question kind of about extracurriculars and like research opportunities or just building your own thing. I know you guys have all done some incredible stuff while at Duke. Uh, can you speak to kind of the things that you were involved in outside of class? We can start with Elizabeth. Yeah, so one thing that I was involved in that was really cool um, is called Bass Connections. Um, I worked with one of my professors who's doing research about how middle school girls um, learn math. And I got every Saturday, I got to work with her and like um, Durham middle schoolers would come in um, and we'd have like lessons, lesson plans for them. Um, and I'm also involved in another club for um, women in STEM called Shiro's, which brings in uh, women to speak to uh, current Duke students, um, which is really cool. And I'm on club lacrosse. So I have some fun activities as well. Nice. Cooper? Yeah, sure. So um, you talked a little bit about building things. So I'll tell you uh, one reason that I really like like Duke is you have people doing a lot of different things. People are really passionate about things. People are willing to really go like outside of class and do fun things. So one such thing was freshman year, uh, like right before Thanksgiving break, our whole year uh, 2022 group me was blowing up people asking for, uh, you know, rides to the airport or who's going and we can split an Uber and things like that. So me and two of my friends um, made this web app called me you rdu rdu is the like uh, airport that's right next to duke raleigh durham international and it was like it's fun little like you get massive of people and then you split an uber save money save the environment a little bit um and it's safe which is nice because i'm not going to get it up it's authenticated and everything and um if you, you know you're leaving to go to the airport at like 4 30 in the morning you might not be comfortable ubering um especially if you're a woman so that was, that was nice. And that was a lot of fun because we were able to get a product out there right away. And I, I felt really grateful to be in an environment where people were willing to use it. And also more importantly, people were willing to build it with me. It was not hard. It was, it was the hard part was everybody would want to build something like that. You know, people are interested in building things. And how many users um, or how many rides have like, what, what metrics do you have for that? Yeah. I'm not sure how many, how many rides we've done in total. It's in the probably around 5,000 maybe, but actually be fewer than that. Um, our, our total users, the first weekend, which was, we uh, released it like right before Thanksgiving break my freshman year. So two years ago, I think we had 800 people use it then. And then it's kind of grown since then. I, I'm not sure of the numbers, but it was super neat because you're able to just kind of get something out and make a product of, of you know, a solution for student body, a really targeted audience. And then a lot of people use it and it's, it's great fun. Thanks for that. And one thing I'll add on that is that that is a very um, common practice on Duke's campus. A lot of kids are building stuff. They're building apps, they're building services. Um, they really do do a good job in taking that initiative and kind of trying things out and have the community to test it out. So it's also a really good place to get like just testers for your apps and stuff. Cause I know a lot of people try to launch stuff and they'll just launch it on the Duke server and just get Duke students to use it before they launch it um, officially to the kind of iOS app store. Um, so having that student community is really helpful and even getting that, um, opportunity to kind of leverage that. Um, so we'll go to, uh, Lisa. Sure. So I, my big thing was I did a lot of research while I was in undergrad. So I did um, epidemiological research. So for those who don't know what that means, it's like studying disease and, um, how diseases transmit between people. It's a lot of the stuff that's been going on with COVID. Uh, so I did a lot of that, and I actually got to go to Madagascar, um, fully funded and paid for by Duke, which is a really cool thing if you're interested in research. There's a lot of opportunities for funding, uh, where Duke will give you the money to do the research, to do the travel, to write the papers and manuscripts, and to submit them. So that's really great. And then another fun thing that I was a part of was the Duke Puppy Kindergarten. It was actually a lab that was um, trying to understand how service dogs 
uh, grow and develop from when they were puppies into adulthood. So they had, I think the most recent cohort was like seven puppies just on campus that were on campus all the time and students would take care of them. And I would, was one of the volunteers that would help take care of them, but any student could come and hang out with them. So that was always nice, especially during finals. A lot of people would be around hanging out with the puppies. So that was a good time. Quincy, you mind if I uh, jump in and ask a quick question? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Lisa, Cooper, and Elizabeth, thanks for the time. Uh, we really appreciate you guys volunteering and uh, taking a moment to speak to the class. Uh, you guys are obviously great ambassadors of Duke. And um, yeah, I think they'd be proud if they were able to hear some of the nice things you guys are saying about the campus and the university. Uh, so the question I have, uh, obviously with, with college, um, the academic growth is, um, what people I think think of when they think about college, but maybe the, the more important thing are the social, the, uh, the sociology components of it or um, kind of the development and learning to interact with their peers. Um, how much of that do you think uh, you really benefited from Duke specifically and, and what were some of the ways that you grew as a person? Um, kind of, you know, cause obviously you guys all seem like precocious individuals and maybe attribute that a little bit more to your upbringing than anything else, but what do you think Duke did in order to contribute to that? Um, so funny story is I actually met Quincy, um, when I, like during my first week at Duke, he lived on the third story of the dorm that I was in and I was on the second story and that dorm building was, everyone was very, very different to say the least. We had guys that would be your typical bratty guys and really, really academic minded people. And this dorm as like crazy and mixed up and different as it was became this really really great environment for like fostering like who I would become as a person because I met people like Quincy I met people like my friends Divya and Corinne um, my friend Jake these people that came from all these different backgrounds and it really does force you to um, evaluate like what are the things that you care about what are your own values your own personal morals what do you want to achieve and you'll have this community to support you um, as you try and pursue those goals but you'll also have a community that'll challenge you because I can think of so many times when I would sit in the common room and I'd be thinking about something and you know in would come Quincy and Divya and they would just gotten out of a class um, and they would talk to me about the things that they were learning and they were in completely different areas of study and it was actually impacting the stuff that I was learning about in my um, science classes and I didn't even realize it because it wasn't something that I myself would have been exposed to. So I think that the ability to grow through your peers um, and create those like lifelong connections at Duke uh, is something that is really, really special and very different, I would say, to other places as well. One thing I'll add to that too is we were forced to hang out a lot because I know a lot of you were talking about how fancy the school is. We did not have centralized air conditioning. So our dorm was hot as heck um, and it really made you go down to the common room to all convene around the fan uh, <laughs> during the summer. So you were literally forced to hang out and stuff. Um, and one thing I'll add to is that you really don't um, have another opportunity like this at a lot of other schools to get immersed with students from all across the world. Um, and so even in our dorm, like there were students coming from all these different, and like when I mean backgrounds, I don't mean just like socioeconomic status or like your state, like this is countries and entirely different religions and cultures and histories. Um, and so that is really hard to find in other spaces and stuff. So that's one thing that I think our dorm really gave us the opportunity for. Um, but I'll take it back to uh, Elizabeth. Yeah, just like adding to that, I think also like, I know this question was kind of like separating social from academic, but I met a ton of different people like through my classes and through like, just kind of like, honestly, like struggling through some of my classes, like you sit in a really big lecture hall and you're like, I can't believe everyone else in this classroom is like understanding what's going on. And like, I'm sitting here and I don't know what's going on. But then you go to like office hours or like a smaller like recitation section of that class. And then you like talk to people and you realize that like, actually like they're also confused and like you can talk to people and like work through problems together um, and like learn a lot about like what other people are like and how you interact with other people and problem solve like in those settings too, which I didn't really expect to like make friends or like make social connections in my classes, but I definitely have. Um, and it's way more collaborative than competitive, I think, um, kind of in that situation. 
And uh, Cooper, could you speak maybe to uh, freshman campus? I know we talked about like the dining component, but like just what exactly that means and um, what experience that gives you. Yeah, 100%. So you're living on East Campus, which is just a really short bus ride or like one mile walk from West Campus is where most of the classes are. And it's where juniors and sophomores who are living on campus will live. So it's it's really nice. I'm like coming in again. This is something I was wrong about. And it turns out luckily it didn't matter. I was not super excited to not be living on West Campus. I didn't really, you know, wasn't super sold on the idea of East, but it's really nice living with a bunch of other people who, especially at the first semester and even the first part of the whole experience, like everybody around you is like just as lost as you are. This is the first time being in college. It's the first time like doing college classes, all this stuff. So it's really nice just to be around other uh, freshmen, pretty much everybody you run into. And I have actually have not had the experience where this has dwindled, but you, you might think sophomores and juniors and seniors, they'll be like less willing to make friends with random people because like maybe they already have their friend group. Again, I haven't actually found that to be the case, but if anybody's you know willing to make friends, it's going to be freshmen. So on freshmen on East campus, like everybody around you is willing to you know be friends and they're always willing to add a new friend and everything like that. Um, so dining is fun. It's I'm, I'm really glad that it's the, uh, the type of experience it is. It's not like a food court style. It's like dining hall style, which is conducive to making new friendships. Um, and the entire campus is really geared around that. Um, on, on the note of other things that Duke does that kind of like fosters a good social environment, I'll say two things. So they have, um, well, I think, I think the excitement around uh, sports is really neat. And and when I was touring, um, or when I was there for, yeah, when I was touring, uh, somebody that I talked to said, like, I'm not even that into sports. Like, they weren't that into basketball. They weren't that into any of it. But even if you aren't, and I'm not really either, but even if you aren't, like, just all of that environment, like, being around you is super great. It's, like, de-stresses you. It's nice to have something else to focus on. So there's that. Even if it's not your thing, it's really nice to have it, like, adjacent to whatever your thing is. And then with Kayville, um, which is, like, the area right outside of Cameron Indoor, which is where we play basketball, uh, and tenting, which is this, I'm not going to get into all that, but it's basically all the camaraderie around like the basketball games against UNC and all that. It's nice that Duke facilitates those social experiences. But then another thing I'll say is that it seems like I, I looked at like, I looked to when I was a freshman, the people who were most like academically and like career success, they had the most success in those realms. And I was like, how should I model like some things after them? And what was really great for me was they were the ones even, it's not like two different worlds. Like they were the ones involved in these kinds of things. And they told me like, you know, chill, like you don't have to do all this academic stuff like too crazy, like focus on this other stuff too. So for instance, after freshman year, I was maybe going to do this tech internship, which I thought, oh, I'll get an internship. I don't need one, but I'll get one. And then I'll be ahead for recruiting for next year, this whole thing. And one of the smartest people I know, most successful was like, don't do that. Like you have so much time to do work. Like, you know, you should go do Duke and Oxford, which is this Duke in program, which is a facilitated like study abroad for six weeks with other Duke students and whatever university there's, they're all around the world. Um, so I ended up doing that and it was one of the best experiences I've had in my Duke experience. And what I love about the story is that like, it was one of like my like nerdiest or like most like career and academic oriented friends who told me like, go do something fun. So it's a whole, I think it's, I think it's part of the culture. And I think that it's pretty, it, it's good that you can't really miss it unless you really try to, honestly. We also had a question yeah, about, um, question. Oh. Uh, sorry, one, one second. I didn't know who uh, said something, but um, we had some questions about esports at Duke. So they do have an esports league um, and it's like intramural stuff. And so I actually, like, I lived right in the dorm right next to this. Um, and students are in this like all the time. I think it's open 24 hours and they have like a whole gaming room. They have several consoles. Um, and then, like, what's not showing in here is like a whole computer lab um, that's specifically for gaming too. So that does exist. Um, so if you're interested in that stuff a place there um i don't uh was someone else trying to speak it was or, me it was me oh giovanni i wanted to ask about transferable credits because i already have college credits right now and i wanted to know like if um like how does this tra transferable credit system works because i know specifically only uncc has this thing like a lbsts and it, they're kind of different from i mean supposedly that's what i heard i don't really know anything else about other colleges so i just wanted to know uh how are transferable credits if any of you guys know anything about it Great question. Um, so I can let maybe Lisa, do you want to speak to like how the AP credits work? But yeah. Yeah. So um, Giovanni, real quick, are you interested in like engineering or something more in like the College of Arts and Sciences? Is oh, um, so actually right now I'm, uh, I'm majoring in computer science in UNCC. Okay. So 
um, computer science is part of the College of Arts and Sciences, not the engineering college. I only clarify that because I did have a friend who went to Duke, but he applied as an engineer thinking that computer science was in the engineering school. It's not, it's in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, but so for Trinity, which is that's, uh, which was what computer science would be in, um, for the most part, your you can use two AP credits um, towards actual like graduation credits. Every single class at Duke is worth one credit, so there's no like credit hours the way that you might see at other universities. Every class, regardless, is one credit. So um, you can use two APs to get two credits towards your total graduation requirement. Everything else, um, it may not necessarily be able to be used for like actual credits towards graduation. Um, but instead it might actually be able to it would help with like placement um so for like things within majors it might be you know the ability to skip intro classes and start taking electives earlier on um i know uh, it's a big thing with languages since there's a language requirement for the, for trinity uh you can use it to test it to place into higher levels of the language um so you may not have to take a full three semesters if you can take a higher level you um a 300 level course you only have to take one semester uh, so it's different things like that. And I know that those all should be online um, through, I don't know exactly where anymore. I'm a little out of season on my tour guiding stuff, but I can look into that and I'm sure that I can get it to Quincy who can get it to you. But thank that's you, kind of the you. way those transfer uh, things work. Thank right. you. I didn't know the, that the, they don't even have credit hours and they have one credit for class. I didn't even think about that ever. And I haven't even heard that before. So. I was kind of shocked when you tell, told me, so I'm happy that uh, I've had this idea before I even, you know, try to go over Definitely will look into it, though. Love to hear it. So we, um, I saw one question here asking about an honors college at Duke. I don't believe we have that. Um, the whole school is pretty academic, so I don't really think they make any of those distinctions. Um, but with that said, we have time for one more question uh, for each of you. So. If you could just leave the students with, there's also some students on here that don't really know if college is even kind of the best option for them. So could you speak to like why you chose college in general and then like what tips you have um, if you were in their shoes as a high schooler right now? So let's start with Elizabeth. I think um, my biggest piece of advice, like before, like as you're in high school, thinking about what you want to do um, with the rest of your life, is just like not being afraid to change your mind like I think that I I have a really hard time like if I'm like oh I'm studying mechanical engineering like from the start I like if I decided I didn't like that like I had moments where I doubted it and I thought about switching to a different major but I didn't and I think that like just coming in with a, as an open mind as possible and like being willing to like realize you might like experience something new and then decide that you actually want to study something different or like you want to drop a class because you don't like it like just being really open-minded and like knowing that like you don't have to have one specific track to like be successful like there's so many different things you can do and ways to um, reach your goals thanks elizabeth let's go to uh, cooper yeah so um i think basically like one overarching answer to maybe all those questions is something that i realized which was um you have a lot of time like in pretty much in like your your whole oh is my mic weird somebody just said cooper asmr in the chat <laughs> do i, I you're good okay <laughs> hear you but it does sound um you know pretty soothing so just keep going is that can we get okay taps on the mic what i said can we get some taps on the mic yeah sure so we go all right so <laughs> so no uh one thing is like it is kind of a and maybe you know take whatever who what do i know but i came in a cs major and i was thinking like you know i'm trying to like get what i need to go like start my career and all that stuff and i think what i've realized is that like uh, apart from like like accruing like knowledge if it's like tokens that we're going to spend like getting your job or whatever i think i've been focusing more on like becoming like like a more like instead of like more knowledgeable maybe like just more like intelligent and like more able to like handle different situations which it manifests itself like socially too you know that's not just academics um so i think you're gonna have to make that value judgment for yourself but i think like what you should be prioritizing right now because we're so young is becoming like versatile at like 
basically handling situations that you haven't seen before and like maybe trying to get jobs that you haven't thought about getting before or trying to do a task that you have never conceived of, you know what I mean? Those kinds of things. Um, so that's like more outside of the box stuff. That's going to, it's going to be more, that's going to be brought to you more by like a diversity of experiences than it is going to be by like it, you know, super direct expertise in something again, like that would shift when you got older, but I just like, I, I've kept feel, I keep feeling more and more like I'm so young. Like I should just be kind of preparing for like the general like life experience. You know what I mean? The general like career experience, like becoming like smart at like arguments and like reasoning, things like that, rather than like writing a certain like type of program or something like that. Um, so again, like you'd have to see if that's applicable to what you're thinking about. Um, but that's something that I wish I had realized earlier and it applies to experiences as well. And I've been much more kind of experiences oriented now in the last like year, year two years, uh, which I realized I wish I had picked up earlier. We have a um, presentation later for everyone about like, you know, opportunities and thinking ahead and Cooper stole about half of the content about working on versatility. So um, Cooper, I'm gonna need you to redact everything you just said. Um, yeah, thanks man. <laughs> And Lisa, um, we had a lot of questions about this that we didn't get to answer. So rather than answering this, if you could answer, just speak to kind of your experiences in the arts at Duke. I know you were involved in some stuff, so um, we'd love to hear about your thoughts there. Yeah, so um, I, one of the coolest things that I got, like, so you mean like the, like the theater, uh, art, all that. Any kind way of that stuff. you were able to kind of. Okay, just check. Dollars, yeah. Um, yeah, so I got to be a part of a student production, which was actually, once again, this is goes back to you'll meet a lot of really great people at Duke who will really open um, your horizons. I was exposed to theater and acting through one of my friends who lived on my floor freshman year, because she was the director of a student run monologue show. And I, I never acted before in my life. I was a high school marching band kid. So I thought that acting was not a thing that was going to be for me and she encouraged me to audition. And I think the cool thing was in that show, we had, you know, theater majors. And then we also had engineers. There was me and my other friend who were bio, both bio majors. We had pub, pol, public policy majors, like all these people from different backgrounds had the opportunity to get together and do art in a way that was really um, important and meaningful. And theater isn't the only thing. So Duke has a really great marching band and um, different like wind ensembles. So I was in the wind ensemble for a year, uh, my first year. And um, they have wind ensembles, symphony orchestras that are really, really fun. And the cool thing there is unlike a lot of other schools, like if you're interested in music, um, you don't necessarily like, it's not gonna be this impossible thing to be able to join. Like you can actually get into these ensembles pretty easily and get an opportunity to have that musical outlet. And Duke really does have amazing facilities for the arts. They just, I'm, I'm assuming you might've seen it on your tour, uh, um, but if you haven't, maybe go look up some photos of the Ruby, which just opened recently during my time at Duke, uh, which is just a beautiful art center that Duke has built um, where all the different dance teams and the uh, theater performances and groups like that have an opportunity and a space um, to really like let that more artistic side um, come through. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it seems that Gabe is going to find love at Duke and uh, hopefully he's going to get married there in the future. So at least we got one that's I thinking about attending. Um, I think we're out of time for questions, Sherman, but if you want to, I'm going to be here several times more. So you can always ask me. Um, I'll kind of answer anything that you guys have, but I know that you guys have other things to get to. So we'll let you all go. Thank you so much for giving us this time. Thank you for our panelists for being here today. Really appreciate it.